Before we can actually use NGRX Entity, we need to install the library. Go down to Module 6 and Video 34, click on the documentation. And what we're after for now is the installation link. So click on that, and I'll use the ng add since I'm using Angular 9. Copy this. Let's paste this in the terminal. In the terminal, paste, and hit enter. I already had the package already installed, and the only change you should see is to the package.json file. And now we're ready to start using ngrx entity. So we could come in here and manually create all the files like within our, our products. Like we create a state, create our actions, our reducer file, tell our product module about it. Or we could use the command line to generate all those files for us and all automatically configure our application. And that's what we'll do. In a prior video, we already installed the NGRX schematics. Let's check the documentation out for that again. In a prior video, we installed this NGRX schematics. If you missed that for any reason, you, you want to click on the installation, then go down to ng add and also copy and paste this within the terminal. Very important. If you don't do this, then the command that we're running won't work. And the command that we will be running is inside the schematics and entity right here. So we're going to be generating a new entity, a whole collection of files automatically, and we'll automatically configure it to the application. So we use the ng generate entity, the entity name, in this case it's going to be products, and then the options we want to use. And down here are the options we want to use, the module. So we're going to configure it to our feature module this time. In a prior video, we, we configured it to our main app module, the for root. But now we're using the for feature. And I'll be showing you that after we generate these files. Also, we'll use the reducers. We want to tell our main index file about this new reducer file that's being created. So we'll use that as well. And then we'll skip the test. So we'll use a total of three options. Let's copy this and run this in the terminal. And paste. And then where do we want to put our new entity or our collection of files and also what is going to be the name of our entity. And in this case, it'll be inside the modules folder, inside of our products folder. And we'll create a brand new folder in here called state. And that's where we'll put our collection of files at. I like to call it state. I like to call all my feature modules state. And I like to call the global store folder store. That's just a personal preference. You probably could call it store if you wanted to. So it's going to be inside the modules folder, inside the products folder, and we'll create a new folder called state, and the entity name is going to be product. And don't forget to use your flag, so we want to configure it to the module file, and we need to go back a directory, so we're going back from the state folder. And when you go back from the state folder, you'll find the products module. And then also our reducers. And this kind of gets tricky as well. We need to go back three directories from the state folder to find the store folder. So go back three directories, so two and three, and then we should find the store folder. And inside there should be our index.ts file. And I'll close this down so we can see better. And then the next flag we want to use is the skip test. And that's going to be equal to true and then dry run just in case we made any mistakes so we don't have to go back and delete all the files we'll run that as well hit enter and yes i would like to use the create function so what it's going to generate is these three files and it's going to be inside of a folder called state that's exactly what i'm looking for also it's going to update these two files and that's also exactly what we're looking for looks good let's go ahead and run this hit up Remove the dry run and hit enter. And yes again. Looking good. Let's review the files that we just created and also the two files that we just updated. And if we go back in the explorer, and here's our brand new folder called state. And I'll go ahead and open up all, all three of those files. And then also open up the products module. We updated that. And then also the main index file inside of our store. And we'll review that as well. And inside the index file, you should see this being added within your app state. And also you want to see that your reducers being added within the reducers as well. So now when we look at our current state, we should see a new feature in there called product. And we'll be checking that out when we check it out in the debugger. And that's it for the index. And then inside the products module, 
you want to make sure inside the imports that you're bringing in the store module and in this case we're using the for feature instead of the for root in the app module we used the for root but since we're in a feature module we're using the for feature and the first parameter is a string the key and we're getting that from our brand new reducer file and then the the reducer we're getting that also from our brand new reducer file so you want to pass in those two parameters so you want to make sure that this is being added in your products module that's it for this file and then inside the reducer file all of this is automatically generated for us and that's really nice and if we start at the top we'll be getting in into this in more in depth in the next couple of videos we're just checking to make sure everything was created correctly for us and we'll be using this entity state in the next couple of videos and this is brought in by ngrx entity and then the adapter that's also brought in from ngrx entity as well this entity adapter and we'll be checking that out in the next couple of videos but this is looking great so far we have a bunch of on methods already set up for us that we'll need to change around a little bit in the future but uh, this is a good start and then here we'll be able to use this adapter to select certain things from our state and that it's very useful and we'll be checking that out in the next couple of videos as well but this looks great let's check out the product.module file and this file we're going to be deleting we don't need this interface this product interface the reason is is we already have one inside of our resource folder the product ts file so we already have this so we could just delete the product.module file we'll do that in a second after we're done our review and i'll close this back down and then inside of the action file all these actions were automatically created for us and it helps us out with some crud functionality we even have a clear products action that will clear out our products for us and we might have to customize this like we'll have to create some of our own actions and also this right here i'm going to change these to where we're dispatching these actions from so we'll need to customize them just a little bit and that's our action file now let's just change around a couple things like for example this right here we're not going to be using the interface from the product model we'll be using the interface that we already have created so i'm going to just remove this and then we'll make sure we pull it in from our resource folder so from the resource folder product make sure you pull it in from there and then also we want to do that from within the reducer file as well so i'll open up the reducer file again and inside here we'll remove this right here this import and we'll make sure we pull in our product from our resource folder as well so the resource product and that's the only change we want to make in here for now and now we want to remove the product module file we don't need this file anymore so we'll open this up and i'll delete this file and yes remove that to the recycling bin and then now we want to generate two more files we want to generate a selector file and also a effects file and we'll add that within our state folder and we'll use the command line to generate those files as well we'll start off by generating a new effect so we'll use the ng generate and ef and we'll use a few options as well for that and then we'll create a new selector so we'll use the ng generate sc for short for that just a reminder i do have snippets already pre-made if you would like to copy and paste if you go back to the home page and click on snippets and you can just copy and paste these right into the command line so this is how you generate a new effect and here's how you generate a new selector back in the terminal let's start off by creating our effect file and we'll put our new effect file in our new state folder and we'll call it product and also we'll configure it automatically to our module by using this option and we'll be configuring it to the products module instead of the main app module also we'll skip the test and also api we'll set that to true and yes i would like to use the create function so that created us a new effect file and it automatically configured it or updated our products module file let's go ahead and create our selector while we're here so we'll create a selector file we'll call it product and we'll put it in the same place our state folder and we'll also skip the test as well and that file is created let's check out all the files that we created i'll close this down and then inside of our state folder we should have a new file called effect and a file called selector and also let's take a peek at our products module again and we'll start inside of the effects file 
And here the products effects name, we want to make sure that this is being pulled into our products module. And inside the products module, at the top here, we're automatically importing the effects module from NGRX effects. That was automatically configured for us when we ran that command. And we're pulling in our products effects. And then down here, we're importing the effect module. And in this case, we're using, using the for feature instead of the for root. And we're pulling in our product effect. And then if we jump into the selector, all this is is one line. We're importing everything we're going to need here. That's it for our selector. So we made a lot of changes. We set up a lot of different files. Let's restart the application and make sure everything is running. Also, if we go in the debugger, we should have a new feature called products in our store. Open up the command line and then jump over to the first terminal. I got it running here. I'll shut it down. Clear everything out, run npm, run dev, and we'll just check it out in the browser before we move on to the next video. And make sure you refresh the browser, and then if we look inside the dev tools and click on Redux, we should see a new state or a new feature inside of our state, and here it is right here, the products. Then also you might notice a little difference. Here we see the IDs and the entities, and we'll be getting into this in the next couple of videos. But that is NGRX Entity adding that for us. That's an interface that is given to us by NGRX Entity. And uh, that is looking good. Also, check out the console. And we got our information still logging out. And we don't got any errors pertaining to what we just did. So everything is looking really good. So in the next video, let's load a list of products from our backend into our store. And we'll do that next.